Bob? Good morning, Ross. Good morning, church. Good morning. Raise those palms. Beautiful. We have a new camera and it's all facing out. You can see you this morning. No, 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 no. The very first thing that I want to acknowledge this morning as part of life and work, Ruth Wareham. She wasn't going to know this, but now everybody knows this that Ruth Wareham on Thursday morning of this following week will turn not 89 and not 91. So you guess the number. Happy birthday, Ruth. Oh, and by the way, Ruth has already had a party. So she wanted to make sure that she got the party in before the birthday arrived. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our services this week are extensive. Thursday, we have a Maundy Thursday service at 7 o'clock. On Friday, 10 o'clock in the morning, will be our Good Friday service. And it will be a service where we are celebrating Good Friday in conjunction with two other congregations. The Baptist Church and the Presbyterian Church have been asked to join us. So we may have a sizable number of folks here at 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Our Sunday service will be at 10 o'clock in the morning and we hope that you will be here because a lot of folks, those who are here in person and those who watch us on YouTube will be here. Make sure that you're here in good time. Concert tickets. Concert tickets are still available. Ross says that they are going quickly, but we still have some more. He has them available for you downstairs. If you wish to phone the office and make an order for your tickets, please do that. But please make sure that you get your orders in soon and quickly. That is April the 16th, uh, 7 or 7.30, Ross? Uh, what does it say? It says right there, 7.30. It says 7.30, so get here at 7. All right, that, that's the name of the game. Uh, different from many other years, we are having an early Easter gathering. That is on Easter Sunday in the CE building. We have, we'll have an oppor opportunity for the congregation to get together, to enjoy the fellowship prior to our service, it is at 8.30 in the morning. It is offering tea, coffee, juice, and hot cross buns. But I don't know how many to buy. Could I have a show of hands of how many people are going to be there at that early Easter morning? I got their numbers already. <laughs> it's a good thing to have a mirror. All right. Hands up again, please, nice and high. Oh, it's even better when you ask for them high. Terrific, 500,000 people. Okay, <laughs> thank you. In the midst of all of that, just to mention to you that there is a funeral that will take place on Saturday. Saturday at one o'clock, there will be a memorial service for Daniel Devonur. It will be at one o'clock and at two o'clock will be the actual service. So there's a visitation at one and the actual service will be begin at two. That will be followed by an internment and also a reception downstairs in the heritage room. That's Saturday, April the 8th. Last week, I said to you that you had a job to do. And no, it had nothing to do with remembering that crazy phrase that I use, which Margie said, no, she wasn't going to repeat it again, so I won't. 
But more important, next Sunday is an opportunity for this congregation to bring people for Easter service. That's because in addition to our service, we are also celebrating a confirmation. We have six young adults who will receive confirmation on that morning. And we will celebrate communion on that morning. So it will be a very busy, busy morning. But please reach out to the people in your community. Reach out to your friends, your neighbors. Tell them that Knox United Church is open and we are here for Easter services. There's one other thing that I wanted to remind you about, and that was, do you remember when Margie was here last week? And we were talking about a little bag that she was going to leave up at the back. I'm glad to say that a lot of people took those bags. And you were asked to put something into those bags. It was just coins. No pennies, please. Just coins. Uh, no foreign coins, please. But how many were you going to put in that bag? 175. Per oh, I didn't hear it loud enough. Oh, okay. 175. <laughs> <laughs> it is our celebration, 175th year of this congregation and this church. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one individual who has already met their goal. Brock Stackhouse, would you stand up please? <laughs> If you can beat that, terrific. 175 is what we're asking for. On the 16th of April, that's the week after Easter, bring those bags in, loaded, absolutely loaded with 175 coins. Somebody said the other day, why don't I just go to the bank? Why don't I write out a check for $175? Could I put that in? We will not ignore you. <laughs> you could ask your bank to change that into coin and then you'd have the coins. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for participating in our opportunity to celebrate our 175th anniversary. Bob, there's one more person with 175 already there. <laughs> Who would that be? Look down there. Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Have you met your goal? <clears throat> Terrific. Would you stand up for me, please? <laughs> I am not going to do this again. I'm not going to center out those people. However, this congregation, I hope, is all going to stand up on the 16th of April when you bring that back. Thank you, Margie. Much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, uh oh, is there anybody here who's 175 years old? <laughs> Good, I'm glad we don't have to do that. I hope you enjoy the service. Thank you. Our opening hymn is, says, uh, hymn, hymn and Palm Parade. Uh, and that's just a parade where we're marching along with a brass band or something, but we know that they danced with those palm branches. We aren't going to go outside, so if you still have your coat, you can put it down beside you. We're going to stay inside and, and dance around the sanctuary. Voices United 123. Uh, the words are in your bulletin on a separate page, so you don't need to have the hymn book with you if you want, and that might make it even easier to dance around. 123, and we will do all three verses, maybe once or twice or three times, depending on how good the dancing is. Thank you. 
We have followed our Lord Jesus Christ in the journey of Lent. So today we celebrate uh, our 
this day as Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is recorded in all of the four Gospels. There are a couple of events, incidents, all of the four Gospels record, and this is one of them. And um, the crowds, obviously, they followed Jesus and the disciples, and Bible records, they shouted. They didn't whisper. They didn't say in a plain voice. They actually used their singing loud voice. They shouted when they said this. And I want you to use your singing voice with me this morning as we repeat what they shouted together. Repeat with me. Blessed is the one. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven. Peace in heaven. Glory in the highest heaven. Glory in the highest heaven. What a great moment uh, it was as they witnessed their Savior uh, finally entering the city of their hometown, their place. We remember and pray for many of us, our family members, in their life's corner hoping and praying that they too may have experienced that joy, that celebration, welcoming the one they've been waiting for. Amen. We have gathered here week after week, sharing a common quest for a deeper faith and a deeper experience of the divine. Listen, the time is drawing near. Jesus is preparing to enter Jerusalem. How will we greet him? Will we follow him all the way to the cross? The power of Jesus is that he lived what he taught and even it led to his death. Jesus radicated the light of God in all he said and did. There are forces today, as they were in ancient Judea, that conspired to put it out. There, where are we in this drama? What are we willing to risk to follow Jesus? As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of illness and disease in the world. Loving God, there are so many choices before us every day. Choices offered by our friends, our families, our culture, and our own past. Some of them encourage the well-being of the earth, ourselves, and our neighbors. Others are destructive. Help us to distinguish between them. May we learn from the choices of Jesus and embodied compassion, justice, and inclusion in all we say and do. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in the opening prayer. O oh Lord God, whose child followed your will, both as servant and savior, and now rules in the hearts of those who accept our Lord Jesus as king. Open our hearts to his rule that we may share those who love Jesus with their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'd like to invite all of you to confess, to say the prayer the Lord has taught, the Lord's prayer, in the language of your choice. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father. 
이름이 거룩히 여김을 받으시오며 나라의 마옵시며 뜻이 하늘에서 이루어진 것 같이 땅에서도 이루어지이다. 오늘날 우리에게 인용할 양식을 주옵시고 우리가 우리에게 죄진 자를 사하여 준것 같이 우리 죄를 사하여 주옵시고 우리를 시험에 들지 말게 하옵시며 다만 악에서 구하옵소서 대개 나라와 근처의 영광이 아버지께 영원히 있사옵나이다. 아멘 Assurance of God's grace Though we may have fallen short God reaches out to us in loving forgiveness. God is with you. God is with me. God is with us. Celebrating this day and walking all the way to the cross with each one of us. For the time of salvation is near. Amen. Children's hymn is Voices United 1, 2, 4. He came riding. Voices United 1, 2, 4.
Hey, my young friends, come on down. Come on down, everyone. Good morning. Wonderful sunshine today. Mira's here. Wonderful, sweet girl. Come on, join us. Awesome. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Hello, love. Good girl. Come on over, friend. Right in here. There you go. Right there, buddy. Right by Miss Vanya. Good stuff. Wonderful. Good morning. I'm so happy to see you. Good to see you. Hope everyone's had a good week. So I wanted to share with you, I've got some photographs. These are actually photographs of my mother's life. My mom, this April, would have turned 75. This is uh, about 15 years ago when she turned 60. And we had um, a family celebration and we had friends of hers gathered together. And I put this together for her um, and I pulled wonderful photographs from her life. So there's pictures of her when she was really young, pictures of her before she had Miss Jane and my brother Bruce. Um, wonderful snippets of special times in her life. So I'm very thankful to have these photographs. And this is something I'm happy to come back and reflect on and look at. Photographs are a wonderful thing that we can use. So I was thinking today, you know, because April is a time when Easter comes, yes, and it is a time for me too where I think of, I think of my mom as well. And I wonder what Jesus' family would have started to have thought as the years passed as well too. Because as we know, in Jesus' time, they didn't have photographs, right? They couldn't take the evidence like that in pictures. So what did they do? How do they remember the life of Jesus? How do they remember this wonderful occasion? I mean, if we look at today, as we were marching around, there were lots of cameras flashing to record this time and to remember this time. So what did they do? How do we remember Jesus' story? Any ideas? We don't have the pictures, so how are we remembering his story? What do you think? Hmm, well, his friends and his family, they are the ones who took the pictures. And they took the pictures in their brain and in their hearts, and they started to talk about it. They started to tell others about it, to tell what Jesus was like as a young boy to say this is what his life was like when he was teaching and this is what happened on that triumphal day when he came in and the people were putting cloaks down and the palms were waving and people get excited by those stories right and they want to tell others and sure enough we now have the bible of course that is filled with pictures you say miss jane we looked at it it's a lot of words yes but words are pictures Words create incredible imagery, often sometimes even better than a photograph can, because a photograph shows that one moment in time. But your words and what's in your heart and your understanding can give so much more detail and understanding of what can happen on a special day. So I want to encourage you to share and to talk and to share the joys and even share, you know, pictures and things that happen and occasions that happen that are hard. because. Part of Jesus' story is we're going to come up now on Good Friday, after this celebratory day, we're going to come to some hard stuff too, right? We're going to come when it became dark and when Jesus was on that cross. But that story and those pictures are just as important as the joyful one, just as significant for us to understand and to keep in our heads and keep in our hearts, but to share. I love sharing things about my mom. She's a part of who I am. I am so thankful for the years that I had with her. I'm thankful for Jesus and the years that I continue to have with him. And it's important that we share that so we can all remember and we can all celebrate what Jesus means to us. So let's say a prayer and let's go down and continue to celebrate. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for what his message was of love of peace. Help us to live his message every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go, friends.
Good morning. Good morning. I will read Matthew 21, 1 to 11 in Mandarin. 马太福音第二十一章第一节到第十一节。耶稣和门徒将近耶路撒冷，到了国法旗，在橄榄山那里，耶稣就打发了两个门徒，对他们说：“你们往对面村子里去。”必看见一匹驴拴在那里，还有驴驹同在一处，你们解开，牵到我这里来。若有人对你们说什么，你们就说：“主要用他，那人必立时让你们牵来。”这是成就，是要应验先知的话说，要对西安的居民说：“看哪、啊，你的王来到这里，是温柔的，又骑着驴。”就是骑着驴驹子，门徒就照耶稣所吩咐的去行，牵了驴和驴驹来，把自己的衣服搭在上面，耶稣就骑上。众人多半把衣服铺在路上，还有人砍下树枝来铺在路上。前行后随的众人喊着：“和撒那，归于大卫的子孙，奉主来的是应当称颂的。”高高在上，和撒那，耶稣即进了耶路撒冷，何城都惊动了，说：“这是谁？”众人说：“这是加利利那撒勒的先知耶稣。” Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. We need your help during the anthem. We're going to sing all the words, but it's hard for us to wave the palm branches at the same time. So it would help us if we could see that you're all waving the palm branches as we sing. Yeah. 
about this little boy on this Palm Sunday. He had a sore throat, so he couldn't make it to church. But his family went. So they came back, the family came back with these palm branches on their hands. So the little boy said, what is that all about? And the mother explained that the people held up as Jesus walked by. And the little boy got very sad and said, Great, wouldn't you know it? The one Sunday I missed church, Jesus showed up. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus showed up. So many events, especially in the final week of Jesus, happened. And they all happened particularly around that term, on the road. On the road, many things happened. On the road to Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, the crowd gathered, waving their palm branches like we did this morning. On the road to Kolkata, Friday, Jesus was crucified. Even after the resurrection on the road to Emmaus, Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up on the road. So many things, a lot of things happened on the road with the disciples, with the followers. Roads were very important in the Bible times, like they are in our times. Roads connect people. Roads connect cities. Roads connect countries and civilizations. People bring goods and trade and they sell and buy on the road. The Roman Empire back then was so committed to road systems. And scholars say they built about 400,000 kilometers of roads. 400,000 kilometers. This incident on the road to Jerusalem is recorded by each of the four Gospels, so it must be important. What would you ride on the road to Jerusalem? If you know, there are, there's a large crowd waiting for you, waving their palm branches, waiting for their Savior, waiting for a new leader, new king. What would you ride on the way? Some insist that Jesus would have ridden, driven a Honda. Because the book of Acts says they were all with one accord. (laughs) I'm sure I just get rid of these corny jokes. Uh, (laughs) With this new leader, what they are waiting for, a new king, would he come like the movie star, like a brave heart in a large, huge stallion with massive armies. He would come, they were waiting for, this leader would come and overturn the evil, the taxation of the government. This leader would rule and reign from a tangible, physical throne. And then this new leader they were waiting for would bless the country, protect them from enemies. And that was the kind of Messiah the crowds had been waiting for. Or didn't they? The Bible records Jesus on the way to Jerusalem. Jesus was riding on what? We all know. Donkey, a colt, small donkey. Not a stallion, not a Honda, but a colt. The season was Passover, Passover. The city was swelled with people up to five times its normal population. Within 30 kilometers within Jerusalem, everyone Everyone was required to attend three major meals. Passover meal was one of them. 
So thousands upon thousands, if not up to a million or more, were in Jerusalem at that time. Flavius Josephus, a Jewish historian, tells that one, on one particular Passover back then in the Bible times, he says about 256,000 lambs were provided. 256, just for one Passover meal. You can imagine one lamb to feed about 10 people. Some scholars believe that it was actually more than 2 million people were among the crowds. 2 million, more than 2 million people were waiting for the new leader. And Jesus showed up on the road on a colt. It should have been a triumphal entry to take over the government, Roman Empire, to claim the heritage of David kingdom, the old Israel. Jesus was in Jericho, the Bible records, and Jesus met in Jericho, Zacchaeus, and healed the two blind persons there. One of them was Bartimaeus, and just spent some days at Bethany on the way to Jerusalem. On Bethany, we heard last week, Jesus resurrected his dear friend Lazarus. So imagine Zacchaeus, blind person Bartimaeus, and Lazarus. So I believe all of them, Zacchaeus, Bartimaeus, Lazarus, were following Jesus on the way to Jerusalem. They didn't argue with Jesus when he said, get a donkey. None of them said, get what? By this time, the followers, they have learned when Jesus tells them to do something, they don't question anything about it. They didn't say, get what? Jesus multiplied food previously a kid lunch, small lunch, Jesus multiplied it and fed thousands of people on a mount. Turn your net to the other side and they had a huge catch that day. Fill the empty jars with water, which made no sense to them back then, but Jesus turned them into wine. So when Jesus said, get a donkey, well, there must be something going. There must be a reason why Jesus said that. So none of them now didn't question. But it is still good for us, good for us to pause and say to ourselves, is this what I understand? I'm not sure I get this. It's very different from what I imagined. After all, John 12, 16, it records the disciples, the very followers, they didn't understand these things at first. They didn't understand why. Why a cult? Why Jerusalem? They didn't understand when Jesus said, get a donkey. Wouldn't you love direction like that? Wouldn't you love every, every day you wake up in the morning and you have to list of things to do what God, that God gives you? It's like God says, go to gas station and meet a person with a blue shirt who has a red Ferrari. You go up to him and say, I need your keys. <laughs> and he's going to say, what's up with that? And then you're just going to say, God needs it. And he will say, here's the key. <laughs> don't do that, please. And don't tell that I said that either. <laughs> the writers of the gospel didn't see this coming at all. They didn't understand Jesus' plan 
at all. It's like, I mean, we're all having decisions that were already made. That's what we're going to do. The council decided to do this. But all of a sudden, Jesus said, get a donkey. Now, let's pause here for just a second. If you're looking for someone, leader, a new king, a new leader, a new politician, like a new mayor of the city, riding a stallion, this person should fix the problems, grant us comfort, grant us security, grant us help to bring unity to the nations, to the safety at the subway stations, to unite our families in their disunity, to grant us health from the broken health system, and so on and on and on. On the way to Jerusalem, we come across this Jesus instead, riding on a donkey. The crowds and disciples are confronted by this strange juxtaposition. Jesus on a donkey and 200 million people are watching. They got it wrong. In Matthew 11, we find probably the only characteristic to this, this Jesus, referring regarding himself, probably the only place where we can get Jesus' personality. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Would you find it easy to come to this somebody? Would you find it easy to come to someone who is just elected as the new mayor of the city out of 400 candidates? <laughs> Behind a closed door in a palace? Jesus said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And here we go. Jesus says, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. They had it wrong. They must have picked the wrong guy. Riding on a donkey. Again, this comes on the back of this visit to Jericho, coming out of Jericho. Jesus dealt, just dealt with two individuals, one beggar who absolutely ate nothing, and the other one, Zacchaeus, who had absolutely everything, the head of the tax collector. The beggar had to stand and hope that he could get stuff. Zacchaeus had his house loaded with stuff. Before that, Jesus was on the way to Bethany. He had to stop the disciples from going there to save his dear friend Lazarus, who was already dead. Zacchaeus, Bartimaeus, Lazarus, on a donkey on the way to Jerusalem. On the gospel records, the gospel records Jesus was weeping over the city Jerusalem. Luke's Gospel, 1941. On a donkey, on the way. Now Jesus is a crying baby, on the way. Jesus wept at the grave of Lazarus before. And Jesus is weeping again. Jesus says, what did he say? He says, as he pray, as he weep, Jesus says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Whenever we hear a place, a name of place, or a name of person repeated twice, it is meaning that God is trying to get the attention in a very somber way. Oh, Abraham, Abraham. Oh, Samuel, Samuel. Oh, Martha, Martha. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, what about us? Oh, Toronto, Toronto.
So on this donkey, Jesus weeps over the city. He says, the city that kills prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under the wings, and you are not willing. On the way to Jerusalem, the Jesus disciples didn't understand these things at first. Or maybe they chose not to understand these things. It goes on to say, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. Finally. Finally. They didn't expect this Galilean carpenter. They expected stallion riding king. And Jesus came not to stride over the affairs of people, but came on a donkey and wept over the city that he longed for. If that's odd enough, here comes another one. On the donkey, weeping for the city he loves. And then what? Matthew 21, Jesus cleanses the temple. You know what Jesus did after this? He went inside the temple He turned the tables upside down because, what? It was full of money exchangers. And Jesus said, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. House of prayer. But you make it a den of robbers. If you think Jesus is meek, no, Jesus is not weak. He is a carpenter. And he has a capacity for amazing tenderness, but a moral indignation. Then the Bible records he was teaching daily in the temple under the threat of death. And people listened, and two things happened on this day and this week. People were healed, and interestingly, the Bible records Children sang. Jesus got rid of the preacher, but saved the choir director. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) Children reveal the hypocrisy of politicians. All of the four Gospels record Children sang the last week. Is it too much of a reach to suggest that here in Knox, we are doing our best, we're striving for children singing? In this 21st century, people on the way to Knox Imagine people come here expecting children singing. On the way to Jerusalem, yes, we need to do a lot of things on the way. But Jesus said, this house shall be called house of prayer. People were healed, children sang. This week, people were healed, children sang. Amen. Let us respond to the message by singing our next hymn, Voice United 1, 2, 2, All Glory, Loud and Honor, Voice United 1, 2, 2.
Invitation to the offering. Holy God, we shout, save us, save us, Hosanna along with the crowd. Save us, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And somehow this chance we have to give our money is a grace of our, your salvation. Away to escape, escape the self focus threatens to consume our lives. So we open our hearts and our hands. Accept our gifts, O oh God, we pray. Amen. Today's offering is now received. with me in the prayer of dedication we offer what we can transformed once more this day this week into a new self me you may, may we become, become a new people, people a gentle people a people of love and compassion born anew from our deepest sorrow to the breath of your forgiveness and love
Let us pray the prayers of the people. God, on this holy day, a Palm Sunday and Passion, we have so many mixed feelings inside of us. We remember Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem with the people shouting praises and waving palm branches. And we join them with our own praises. And yet, we remember too that this wonderful parade for Jesus becomes another kind of parade before officials and the booing crowds. And instead of the crowd singing his praises, they shouting to crucify him. And our hearts are broken by those very shouts and the pain and suffering Jesus bore that day. And yet we know that it is because of his choosing to enter Jerusalem and taking the path he knew he was taking. There is hope, grace, love, and salvation for all. And there are still many in need of hope in our community, in our city, in our church, in our family, in each one of us, our heart. There are still many in need of your grace in this world. There are still many in need of your love in this world. And there are still many in need of salvation in this world. O God, Enter our lives, enter our churches, enter our cities, enter our families, enter our hearts, enter countries once again today. Heal us, God, transform us, renew us, draw us closer to you in this journey of Holy Week, empower us with strength and courage, and with the assurance that you are with us world without end. Amen. Our closing hymn, Voice United 357. Tell me the stories of Jesus. Voice United hymn number 357.
Matthew's Gospel records as Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.